You can find a million tutorials on what to do when we're like wrestling against the wall. Like everybody's got like moves and cool stuff that they do over there. But one thing that I don't think anyone ever talks about, or I can't say ever. Very few. Yeah, it doesn't get discussed a lot. Very specifically, the striking exchange, how to utilize a wall. Ever since we got these walls from Fuji Mat Company, we have been fighting exclusively against the wall. Kids, teens, adults. I think that this moment is undertrained and misunderstood because in modern MMA and combat sports, you get somebody on the cage or the ropes or whatever. Yeah, they do that and then I do this. I think the reason that this doesn't get trained a lot is because it accounts for a very small percentage of the fight. Like you have one moment, one strike, one kick, one placement of the feet. You got like one thing you're gonna do before like things change. And footwork is the most important part of all combat. The footwork here matters a lot. What I see most of the time is people too far away and then they give this guy like plenty of space to come out and do his thing, or they crash too close and they get pulled in and the guy pulls them on top and it ends up one of these and they just mash each other and they don't really fight. But if you set this up, there's moments right at the cage or right at the ropes that are like catastrophic knockouts. That, but you gotta get the distance exactly right so you can't be too close. The distance is different for everybody. Typically I have to deal with a person much taller than me. I finally got my, my buddy here, Dave, from Stay Safe Martial Arts. I'll link his channel down in the description below. If we're gonna do a video on his channel about what to do when you're on, when you're on this, my, my, shoes, my shoes, yeah, this end of it, how to get, how to strike your way off instead of uh, wrestling your way off. But if you want to keep a person there, you can't be too close, right? Yeah. Like if uh, if I get right here, you know, I can't let you get close, right? Right. So I have to keep a distance that people aren't accustomed to, and we actually have to fill the space with punches that we don't intend on landing to get you to move side to side. And as I get you moving, I then predict where you're gonna go next to land that like killer shot. Now, if I just try to chase him and guess, that's never gonna work. He, he's gonna pick a direction and he might, you know, he, I'm too late to the party. I've gotta go to that higher level of martial arts and force him to do what I want. I'm gonna do that through footwork. What, what sports did you play? Like. Like other sports, other oh, than soccer. You play soccer, yeah. right? Any sport where there's defense, when you're defending someone. Oh yeah, it's all that footwork. It's, yeah. it's keeping you, it's forcing you to go one way so I can yeah. do what I want to do. And you can't be too close, because if I'm too close, you can hit your move, right. you know, and be gone. You boom, boom, right? That's any sport, basketball, football, anything where you're defending. And that's essentially what I'm doing. Even though it seems like I'm attacking, I'm defending this space. Yeah. All right? So, I don't want to be too close. I want to let you make this mistake, but here's, here's, if I'm just neutral, even with you, and actually, Dave is making a huge error right here. He's too flat on that wall. I don't like that. We're going to fix that up on his channel. If we're even, Dave, you can pick which way you want to go. He goes that way, away from my power hand, away from my power kick. He doesn't know there's an RKM facility, though, so when he goes that way, he's getting met with <laughs> that, <laughs> that lead leg with no, with no step. If you don't know how to do that, you need to learn how to do that. Uh, I want to pick which way he wants to go. I kind of like making people go that way. That's an easy head kick. Yes, if, you, if, you've got a good, yeah. if you've got a good lead leg. So what you do is I just, it's so slight. I just, just like this. Start this is cutting it. Cutting me off over there. A little bit. I don't want to be too obvious for a couple reasons. If I go like this, you know that this is something's up. Right. And you have all this real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to go. You just want that subtle thing. Just, yeah, really make reacting. it. I want you to think it's your idea. Right. Oh yeah, go that way. Yeah, and you got this boom. Or you get him to go that way. Boom. Like that. Conversely, if you like a big power shot, I do the same thing here. I'm giving him a bit just to move. I let him think it that way's the way out. And give him his head kick. I kind of think it should always be a head kick. We were talking in class earlier. This is okay, getting him to move. And then stopping him with a body shot, getting him to move the other way, right? Stopping him with a body shot. Uh, Jared Robinson, we've done a video on that. But I kind of love it's just a beautiful setup. Cause well, I'm, yeah. lean, I'm leaning into that as it is. What well, you know why? Because people get here and they turn and run. They panic and freak out and think, "Oh, I gotta go." Right. And they they become predictable and easily manipulated. I want you to think it's your idea. This is like a form of psychological abuse. It's like kind of like gaslighting. Yeah. I talk about that all the time. Like I'm making you think 
that I'm doing what I want to do, and really I'm subtly reacting to what you're. Yeah. To do. You, well, you're supposed to get off. The, you're not supposed right. to stay on the wall, right? Right. You're supposed to get off the wall. I'm like, go ahead, get off the wall. Wah! But uh, the the pattern for manipulating them, we're gonna do like a crescent. I would say toenail clipping. Uh, we need to move in like a toenail clipping shape. Right. Like a crescent shape. So as you move, I move over to. But you cut me off. Cut you off. But you go back that way. I need to go out and then in. And it's this outward that most MMA guys uh, miss. Yeah. Right? They just sort of, as he's circling around the cage, they just sort of follow, 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 follow. And they never take that they never side step to actually cut them off. Uh, but I think a lot of people just don't even, even at that level, don't understand this level of engagement here. I think what you hear from the coaches is that as soon as I get up to the wall, it's oh, let's get up on the wall, let's work them now for takedowns, let's work in the clinch, let's, you know, let's do this. Where I believe if, if you're in your position, yeah, you can finish a fight very easily from there and yeah. just completely devastate every, if every which way I'm turning, you're just breaking me you down. You play with your food. Yeah. You know, you play with your food. You're breaking me down. I, and I think, I don't think it's that they don't understand this position. I think that they're afraid of it. Because at this range, Shit can go catastrophically wrong. Uh, more, more so for you, but even for me too, because I'm right out on the end. If you take one step into a punch, I'm eating a big one, right? right? So people like to be like, and, and this is again, not a terrible idea, all the way out. Or all the way in. Or all the way in. Uh, I think that's sort of like just trading one set of problems for another set of problems. People don't like to hang out right at this Pre-exchange between, yeah. Ooh, because she, she can go real wrong. Because you have to be on top of your game, because if you slip up and get, I mean, even during class day, a couple guys would get too close. Yeah, yes. Yeah, from the reminder, they like, get, hey, you're in my range. Yeah, they get drawn in, and they think, oh, I am in a better position. This is like being on top and getting submitted. Like, right. I'm on top. I'm good. So they, they forget, oh, he can hit back. It's harder to get a huge knockout from here, but not impossible. We've seen it a bunch of times. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of, like, highlight real KOs from the... The guy in this position, all right? So you can definitely make this mistake. We're gonna talk about that on that video on David's channel here in a second. But this distance is scary to people. They don't wanna keep this distance because it can go wrong for them. But if you take the initiative, I need to fill this space to give you the impetus to move. And then when you move, if I'm late like this and reacting, I'm never gonna catch up. You're gonna be gone. Right. You, might even, you might even eat a shot. Like a you know, yeah, just and just brief one and just yeah, just just because you got to get out of here. Right. I need to decide which way you're going to go by forcing it and then stepping over in front and knowing and being confident that's what you're going to do. I um, mean, but, you, but you're right. I mean, look at look at how many UFC fights when you see guys get off the wall that you see this guy like chasing behind, just swinging. Yeah. To or catch they do one of two things: Cir circle off the wall. They do like you said, and they're like following him. Right. Right. And the other guy's like doing one of these right away. here. Or. They'll do uh, this one right here. Go that way. They'll be like, yeah, that's good. I wanted to break anyway. Yeah. You know, and they'll switch. concede. Yeah, and they'll just concede real estate because it's fighting is scary and tiring. Right. If you can get down in those legs, stay engaged in the fight, and give him reason, touch him every once in a while, give him reason to move. I'm in control. I have the initiative. He's going where I want him to go. All right. That's, that's, it's the footwork and the distance. But that, that to me wears me out more doing that. Oh, absolutely. Than everything else. And I want it, like at that point I start, either I'm gonna start swinging Hail Marys. Yeah. Or I'm gonna make a real stupid mistake just to. Which will make you even more exhausted. Exactly, just to get out of the situation. What we found is that the defender gets more tired than yeah. the attacker here. Even though it seems like people will resign themselves to here to rest. Right. We'll talk about that. Uh, it's not, I'm reacting. Yeah. Every time you punch, Wait, you're supposed to exhale when you punch, right? Right. I'm also supposed to exhale. I'm also supposed to exhale when you punch. Right. So you're picking when we both breathe. You punch. You punch. Right. If I'm reacting, we're, we're both taking, hopefully, in an ideal world for me, the same number of breaths, but it's never going to be that way because I'm always going to be a step behind. Right. So you have to get initiative and hold that initiative and not give it up by crashing your way into some stupid... 50-50 situation, because 50-50 is for suckers. 50-50 yeah. sucks. Stop going oh, like, oh, I have a positional advantage. Let me go over here to 50-50, right? That's stupid. That's a whole nother video. That's a whole nother video. 
I mainly want to get across to you to maintain this distance, resist the temptation to close it too much, uh, and you decide where they go. Now, I'll, I'll throw a caveat though. If you do get too close and you realize, like, oh, I'm too close, at that point, do you just have to commit at that point? Or are you going to put yourself if, at more risk by then backing off if you realize that? Uh, good question. If you're a wrestler, if you're a little grabby boy, you know, and you're here and you realize, oh, I'm close. It's fine. Go ahead and right. get whatever, whatever your thing is over there. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. From a striking perspective, we've touched on this in a few recent videos, covered it with Shane on his channel. I uh, covered it in the front kick focus course. I like to pretend I'm conceding position, but not really, and just shift weight to the back foot. And then you can reasonably, so they're, they're either gonna run, which would, yes, a different set of problems I'm gonna deal with, or you can sometimes reasonably predict they're gonna run into like something like that. Jab yeah, if, if, if I realize I'm kind of overextending, and he's gonna respond to this release and pressure by coming forward into that. Yeah. That's one thing, and it doesn't have to be that attack. Right. It could be any attack like that. Um, getting guys to run, this is a perfect time to set up spins. You know, I'm going, oh, he's going to run into that. Um, if you've shown him that a few times and he goes to run, boom, the next one up top. It's a great time to spin. I think this moment should be taken advantage of. I think you should train it and drill it a lot. Put a guy right there, put a guy right here. Just put pressure yeah, on. and if I, get, if I mess up and I get too lazy, you remind me that I'm too close. You get complacent. But it's yeah, this. But that's the other thing though too is, is at times I sit them and I want to sit, but then yeah. my knees to back, I'm just. Yeah, just stay there, yeah, just, fine. Sucks, if they yeah. don't run either way, that's fine too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But get them, this is the drill that we do in class. Uh, ready, set, go. I'm keeping him here. Just fill in this space. Not, I don't have to touch him. That gives him an opportunity to deflect me and get out of there. Fill in that space to make him move so I can reasonably predict where he's gonna go. <laughs> And then he gets some practice too, not falling for some of the, yeah, that's perfect. What just happened, he felt me trying to force him to go that way and said, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I think this needs to be practiced more. There's a lot of variables you can do with it. Yes. So if there's any other scenarios that you'd like me to cover up against this wall, I'm really proud, I'm really happy with these things. Fuji did a good job. They did the logo, they asked, now it's not a sponsored video. I did, I did pay for them. But they gave me a little bit they of a break. Went, they went above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. They, they were like, can we put the logo on there? And I was like, yeah. And then they didn't have to do that, but they did it to match the RKM. But anyway, we're going to go over to David's channel right now. Oh. We're going to go over to David's channel right now to do a video on what to do when you yourself are stuck on the wall.